Well, it's two days later, and I think you know that a video such as this is filmed over, you know, eight or ten days, depending on how many other projects or how busy I am. But since I visited with you last, I have drilled holes and pinned or plugged, and they look like stumps, some of the deeper, worst holes. So that'll all be machined off later on. And uh, but some of the little ones there are still going to show up. I don't want to remove so much material off of that that it reduces the, the height here too much at least anyway. Also I did attempt to get that snap ring out of there with a pick and it's virtually impossible and I, again I think I'm going to leave well enough alone but the, the design was necessary such that the screw can be lifted up and out of the half nut, so that's the reason for that, that it appears to be sloppy. It's not a ball in there, but it, it's just uh, built so that it can lift out. And then, looking at the half nut, it's still in quite good condition, and one problem with this type of vise is that uh, this must be kept clean. As you get swarf and, and stuff in there, the screw isn't going to seat properly so you got to keep that clean but it's in good condition because in fact I checked with a file these are hardened. Oh, that's probably replaceable and available if the company is still in business but I don't need to. I really need a new screw. I told you there's a bit of a bend in there. I attempted it to get it out but it's uh, not hardened but yet it's uh, it's a pretty tough piece of steel I may send this out to a buddy and have him straighten it who has a press, but for now that it's just going to stay as it is. I also told you that uh, I wanted to paint this the same color of gray. You know, there's a hundred shades of gray. I think there's a song called a hundred shades of gray, and boy, they aren't kidding. But of course, I had three different colors here of gray in stock. None of them even begin to match. I'll probably use this one. This looks too light, almost like Ford tractor gray. Although it probably would be okay. Doesn't really matter. I like to keep things authentic. So what I'm going to start with today is to make the jaw plates. And I've already found cap screws. These are 5 16 cap screws. I may have to cut some off to length, but you can see that that's uh, what these are counterboard for. So I'm going to do, uh, again, most of this off camera, but the jaw plate on the fixed jaw will be 3 8 thick, so I have to clean this up because it's been sheared. That's a nice piece of 3 8 steel, but wherever you have a uh, shear marks it's it's quite distorted so I have to mill all that off cut it to length and the reason for the thicker one is that I am going to put V slots in this one and that I will show when I get ready to cut that but I don't think you need to see the rest of it and then this thinner stock and that's actually a little bit thick thinner than quarter inch but quarter inch would do too but that's what I happen to have and that'll be the plate on the movable jaw. I don't want it to be too thin or I really need to use fine threads rather than coarse threads or there isn't enough uh, thread engagement although probably doesn't matter sometimes I over analyze. And why am I not showing you how to make the jaw plates because in the very recent videos where I did this little aluminum drill press vise I spent a lot of time showing exactly how I made the replaceable jaws here and located the holes drilled and tapped and you don't need to see that again. If you are interested in that then go back and watch these three videos of making that smaller vise and then you can see how I made the vise jaws. But that's why I'm skipping it in this particular build. About 90 minutes have passed and the jaw plates are done except for the groove. So we got a 3 8 thick one on the fixed jaw and this one is just a little bit over 3 16 some odd gauge dimension but uh, they're bolted in with 5 16 cap screws and they're looking pretty good. Now I'm going to go ahead and lay out the grooves on this fixed one 
and we'll step over to the milling machine and mill those out using a 90 degree V end mill. This won't show up too well, but you can see I've got center lines. There's a vertical one and a horizontal one, and I'm working as close to the holes as I dare go. And this is the end mill that I'm going to be using, and it's called a drill mill, 90 degree, that it is solid carbide. This is the movable or removable jaw out of a Heinrich vise. Makes you want to click your heels, doesn't it? But they just put in two vertical ones. This is hardened, by the way, of different sizes. I'm not going to do that, but looking at this palm grin vise, that's pretty much what I'm doing, and you can see they worked pretty close to the uh, tapped holes as well. I want that v-groove as high as possible. Now the width on this is about 3 16 I'm going to go, I hope, a little bit wider than that, which also means a little deeper. That's why I made that jaw thicker. Well, you know, they did it here too. So I obviously didn't discover that. Uh, I must have had that in the back of my mind, a thin one and a thick one. Let's go do some milling. There's the finished jaw plate, and the groove is just a little bit less than 5 16 wide and approximately eighth inch deep. And I think it should suffice to hold round stock. And you can see I was getting fairly close to the threaded holes, and I didn't want to run into those holes. And that's it for now. The next thing, I have to get ready for the paint shop. So I will take it apart again and clean everything thoroughly and then get it painted. I'm not going to show much of that. That's just routine work that no one would be interested in. But I'm pretty well satisfied. And then I plan on doing all of the final milling after it's painted. It's the next day and I have painted the three castings. The paint is dry and I ended up using this which was called medium gray, appropriate name, since I couldn't really match the other color. So all I have to do is, there's the other color so you can see it's really nowhere close. But it's good enough and I will have to do, although I do like authentic colors but I couldn't find that so let me get the uh, Masking off. I had the edges masked here as well. Then I can get started on reassembling.
Now it's assembled for the last time, so I'm going to take it over to the milling machine, clamp it on the two ends directly on the table, and mill off the top, and then mill the two sides so they're flush. Wear your safety glasses while working in the shop. The vise is clamped down securely to the table, and I'll take my first cut. And finally, just a few thousands to be removed with the fly cutter. Now, this vise could be held in several different ways. But I just switched to the larger Bridgeport vise, which has a little bit uh, deeper jaws than, than the smaller one. And I can't just set it right on uh, the other jaws. It's raised up on this surface with a very small parallel, and I still had to adjust it by a couple thousandths, but I am within... really pretty much right on through the length of it so I know that I'm truly let uh, while level isn't the word true so now it's ready to take the rough cutting and I think I will take a small cut off of this surface as well because that all blends into the jaws and I think I'll check it in the y-axis while I'm at it little fluctuation right there but from one end to the other, it's also right on. And so much for that side. I'm not going to fly cut it. Just take off the burrs and that's good enough for the sides. Now I will flip it over and uh, see how it indicates in. I, I will check it again because I'm not just sure you know things change when you flip it over. And I say this in almost every video. Remember there are a thousand different ways to do a job. So you're thinking why didn't he do this? Why didn't he do that? Well you can do it any way you want. I'm on the second side and I have indicated it in with the last word. It did take just a little bit of adjustment, but it's right on. Okay, let's make some chips. That corner didn't clean up today, and it didn't clean up 70 years ago when they made this vise, so it was just a low spot in the casting, could matter less. And uh, that concludes the milling, so let's take it out and go over to the bench and have a look-see. That just about wraps up this project, and it sure looks a lot better, doesn't it? That's the old plate, and that's the unblemished new one. Now, for those of you who aren't satisfied with the finish, you know, I'm not going to surface grind it. I don't have a surface grinder. There are still a few of the holes. Some of these are plugged. You can see where I plugged them. I knew it would be a different color, but there's nothing I can do about this other than to weld it. 
And I just can't be worried about some of those details. It will never be new. It's used. It's uh, 50, 60 years old. I'm not sure just how old. And then as far as the finish is concerned, let's take a look at this other brand new one. And see, you can almost always see machining marks because this would not have been considered a precision vise. So there's all the machining marks. They would have had a, a fly cutter or a very large face cutter. And that's beautiful and that's honesty in machining. Some of these other blemishes could have been machined out by going to a greater depth, but I was not willing to give up any more of the height of the jaws in order to do that. Also a few on the side, not that side so much as, I think there's one on this side, yeah. I would have had to take it off quite a bit to remove that one. And this is of course the purpose of the V-slots in the fixed jaw to hold round stock. Either in a horizontal or vertical position. But then again you knew that. Now I know I've made a lot of vice videos in the last year but there's always something new to learn. It doesn't really matter whether I'm making a vise or some other device or a remodeling one, restoring one. There are interesting machining operations. Again, you can do them in countless different ways. This was a fun project. It did take me seven or eight days, including a, a weekend. I took some time off. I'm sorry to announce at this time that my dear brother Jan and Cody Wyoming passed away a week ago and I'm still grieving over that and uh, that's why I took some time off so dedicated to Jan. Hope you liked the video. Leave a kind comment. Consider subscribing. You don't need to subscribe. Just consider subscribing. This is Mr. Peach. So long for now.